Hello, hello everyone. Clayton Miller here with Makeover Homes, checking in for another awesome module for all of you contractors out there. Looking forward to being a Makeover Preferred contractor. So today we're going to be going over a little bit of the actual project breakdown. Um, a couple of things that are involved in there are, you know, how does the money process work? Um, you know, how are you guys getting paid? If something pops up and there's a problem, from a change order standpoint, how do we tackle those change orders? Um, there's a number of things we're gonna go over today that all have something to do with once the project gets started or something that we think you should know prior to the project getting started, one of the two. Um, we're gonna cover these main topics today. We're gonna cover your material draws. So because of what's going on right now in the economy, they've opened up material draws, made it a little bit easier for our contractors to get some money. We're going to talk about draw requests. This is how you get paid, you know, the important part. We're going to talk about change orders and how we tackle those, both uh, necessary change orders and, you know, extra change orders if somebody just wants something in addition to. Uh, we're going to talk about the 10% holdback, which uh, unfortunately not a lot of contractors are aware of when they get set up on these projects, so make sure you guys know. We're going to talk about the reserves that clients are uh, required to hold back in the event that something pops up we don't know about. We're going to talk about the VIPs. Who is it that you're going to be talking to and working with once the project starts? Um, and then we're going to talk about the final draw and how to set that up. And then at the very end, we're going to talk about the 203K full versus the 203K limited and what those differences are. So once the project starts, that's what we're talking about today, how you get paid, what the processing looks like, and how we get to the finish line. All right, guys, so first and foremost, we've got the material draw. So the material draw is going to show up in two different uh, settings. The first one is going to be some lenders are able to give you guys a material draw at closing. So don't expect this. Don't expect any kind of down payment to get the project started. We've kind of talked about that in the past. But some lenders do allow material draw at closing. So what they're going to do is they're going to look at your materials column, and they're going to figure 10%, 20%, 50%, all lenders, if they do it, all lenders do it a little bit different. Um, and sometimes it's, you know, 50% or $15,000, depending on which the higher number is. So on occasion, some lenders are going to give you guys a material draw to get the project started, and that's great when they do. The next way a material draw gets put into place is if you're going to be ordering some kind of specialty material. So you're going to order a new lumber package. You're going to order a new set of cabinets. You're going to order... Um, you know, 35 windows, whatever it might be, if you're going to be placing a, a relatively large order that's got a long shelf life, so, you know, windows are, you know, four to six weeks. Right now, they're almost 12. You know, cabinets, four to six weeks, countertop, four to six weeks, depending on uh, the season and what's going on. So that material draw is really handy for you when you place that order for those windows. You can actually send your receipt into your HUD consultant to do a material draw on those windows or on those shingles or on that framing package. And then they can, again, look at your material line item that you had for that uh, specific piece of your bid, and then they can send you that material draw. That way you don't have money just sitting out there on the shelf um, when it could be back in your pocket and used to pay your guys, you know, that coming Friday or, you know, your sub for the next piece. Um, so material draws are pretty much the same across the board, but there are some slightly different rules in FHA versus conventional, and you're going to know that going forward. We'll talk to you about it before the projects get started. So we talked about a material draw a little bit, and now we're going to talk about the big piece of the puzzle. This is the draw request. This is how you're going to get paid for the work that you're doing. So the draw request is basically a form that you're going to receive from our HUD consultants, and you're going to be able to look through it, let us know what you've completed, send it back to us, and then a HUD consultant is going to show up on site to verify that that's done. So we're going to talk about that uh, in depth here in a moment. But what we want to start by saying is plan ahead. So the way that a draw request works is, like I said, you fill out your form, send it to the HUD consultant. That HUD consultant needs to then schedule a time to show up on the property, view the property, view the project, make sure that what you suggested you had done is done, and then verify, check, go ahead and pay the contractor for the work done. So we ask that you plan ahead and, and foresee what's going to be done. So if you know that 
your demo is completed, your framing is done, and you've got an electrician that should be finished up by, call it Friday, and today's Monday, go ahead and put in that draw request for that Friday. Say demo's done, framing's done, and I know electric's not done yet, but by the time that uh, HUD consultant gets there, it should be completed. So if you could plan ahead up to a week, week and a half, and project out, here's what we're gonna have done by this time. If you could swing by uh, next Tuesday, um, we should have all of these things done. The good news is, if one of those things isn't done, no harm, no foul. If somebody didn't get to it, the HUD consultant's just gonna scratch it off the list. No big deal. The other thing that may happen is, if it's not totally completed, the HUD consultant can jot down 50% done, 60% done, however it might be, and give you partial credit for those line items. So this form that you're gonna receive is gonna come from the HUD consultant itself. It's a draw request form. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna be a list of all of the different uh, line items that you have broken down by the SOR, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. So you're gonna look at your draw request. You're gonna see that there's X amount of dollars in framing. You just got your framing done. Check, we'd like to have all of that framing money. You're gonna look down and see there's X amount of dollars in interior walls or, uh, or wall coverings. We got drywall done. Yes, we would like to have that drywall piece. Whatever your line items might be, you're gonna receive a draw request. It's gonna tell you how much you have in each section. You're gonna fill out that form and then you're gonna send that back to the HUD consultant. The HUD consultant is then gonna come out, again, verify that everything on that list has been completed. And if so, check it off and then he's gonna turn that into the bank and tell him to pay the man. So the draw request, super, super important. That's how you get paid. You're gonna receive a request in the email. You're gonna fill it out, send it back in to us with everything you have completed, schedule it ahead of time so that we've got plenty of opportunity to get it on the books and make sure we get uh, an inspector out there. And then we're gonna fill out that form, send it in and get you paid. So um, the next piece to talk about is use your draws. Uh, depending on the size of the project, some people only use two draws, but you are able to use four to five draws for your project. So rather than have a bunch of money sitting on the table because you've completed one, two, three, four, five, six different steps, after you've completed a major milestone, go ahead and ask for a draw. You complete another milestone, ask for another draw. Rather than waiting and waiting and waiting and pushing money out as far as you can, we recommend that you make a big piece Use your draws, collect your money, and live to find another day, so to speak. Um, most draws are going to take somewhere between 7 and 10 days, from the time the, the HUD consultant shows up to the time the check is in your pocket. So, again, we like to plan ahead. Make sure you're thinking, what am I going to be done here in about a week? Let's request draws early and often. Make sure we're getting you the money that you need. The other thing you'll find is that for whatever reason, if 30 days goes by and you still haven't requested a draw, the lender is going to wonder why. All these projects, once they start, need to keep on moving. So unless there's some kind of unforeseen issue that we run into or a material that we're waiting on, whatever it might be, every 30 days at the absolute maximum, uh, you should be turning in a draw sheet and asking for some funds. And here's an example of what your draw sheet may look like. So you're going to receive this in your email. It'll have the client's name at the top, the address of the job that you're working on, an access code if you don't already have one. And then these are the categories that are going to show up on the SOR. So this breaks all of your categories out into the different numbers that you've requested. So this is just a pretty good example here. Here's our 35 categories. On the original bid, here's how much we asked for in each of these categories. So apparently they've got quite a bit of brickwork going on. Looks like they're going to be reciting the majority of the home, um, getting all new gutters and downspouts, and doing some work on the roof, maybe a portion of it each shingled, and so on. So because this is draw two, you can see the balance available. So I originally asked for $15,000 in the masonry, masonry category. Well, in the first draw, I must have asked for something around 5000 bucks. So that means if I've completed all the masonry work that there is left in my contractor requested amount, I can put $10,500. If I've completed another good chunk of it, but maybe not all of it, maybe I request another 5,000 bucks. That's telling that contractor, hey, we're about two thirds of the way through with all of our masonry work. Let's go ahead and get another piece of that puzzle. 
So when you fill out your draw form, you're just gonna work your way right down the sheet, letting us know on the exterior, so here's a good example on the exterior, $2,400 was asked for, balance available, $2,400. We haven't asked for any of that yet. So depending on what that exterior line item was, we can go ahead and type in $2,400 and grab that whole piece. If you ever have a question about what or which of your line items are under these categories, you can refer to the HUD Consultants SOR. The HUD Consultants SOR will have each room broken down line item by line item, and each line item will have the category next to it. That way, if you don't know exactly what went into this masonry number, you can refer back to your SOR, see that it was some block work, some brick work, and some tuck pointing, and then you'll know we've got that done, that done, but maybe we haven't finished the last bit. Let's go ahead and turn in a draw request for two thirds rather than all of it because we aren't quite finished yet. So you're gonna receive this email after each draw, updating you with the newest numbers. And then when you fill that thing out, you're gonna then email your request to requests at makeover-homes.com. This can be done either via filling it out on their computer, or if you're more of a print it out, write it in and you know take a picture or scan it and send it in. Either way, we don't care how we receive it. It just needs to be sent to requests at makeover-homes.com. Com. One quick note to go over when talking about draw requests is that the HUD consultant is the ultimate authority when it comes to confirming or verifying that the money that you've asked for looks like and aligns with the amount of project that's been completed. So just wanted to bring up a quick example. If you say that you, all of your rough and plumbing is done, for example, $7,000, you said it's completed. And the day that the HUD consultant showed up, maybe your plumber was slacking, maybe he forgot, maybe you ran out of time, whatever it might be. He forgot to uh, rough in a vanity and he forgot to rough in a toilet. Well, that HUD consultant now can't say that all of the roughing is completed, but he can give you partial credit. So rather than the full $7,000, maybe he gives you $6,200. And then once you get those last two line items completed, the vanity and the toilet, you then add that to your next draw, and when the HUD consultant shows up the next time, he's able to then go, okay, check, check, here's your $800 for that rough and plumbing that we didn't give you last time. So if this happens, no harm, no foul, it happens all the time, that's the HUD consultant's job, to make sure that the work asked for is the work that actually got done, or rather, the money being asked for is for work that's actually been done. So this also works on the flip side. That HUD consultant's going to walk around with your draw request, but they're also going to have a copy of the SOR. And if they see something that's on that draw request that maybe you didn't ask for, or you forgot, but as they're in the home and looking at it, they see that it's completed, they can go ahead and update your draw request, add that additional $2,000 for exterior or for flooring or whatever the line item may be. So if they see something that isn't done, they can add it into your draw request, which is going to increase how much money you're getting on that draw. So the HUD consultant is the ultimate authority. They're going to look at your project. They're going to look at your draw request. Whatever's done, they jot it down, and that's what you get paid for.